Well, the Sanders clan is lawyered up. Federal agents reportedly are investigating whether Jane Sanders, the wife of Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, committed fraud by lying on a loan application for Burlington College, which she ran from 2004 to 2011 and went under not long after that. Senator Sanders says this is all a witch hunt orchestrated by one man, attorney Brady Tenzing, who's managed Trump's presidential campaign in the state of Vermont. Is that true? Is it a witch hunt? We decided to ask the man himself. Brady Tenzing joins us tonight from Burlington, Vermont. Brady, thanks a lot for coming on. Tucker, thanks for having me. Um, so let's get to the, the basis of the claim. So there was a story a couple of days ago touted by the Sanders campaign or office that the person who supplied the notion, who told you originally that Jane Sanders committed fraud at a loan application, in fact was passing on hearsay, and therefore, <clears throat> says Senator Sanders, this whole claim is false. How do you respond to that? Well, thanks for bringing that up, because there's been quite a bit of confusion over that issue. Now, there's, there's two aspects to this, to this claim. The first one came about as a result of a letter that I sent to the United States Attorney that presented facts that were called from Public Records Act requests, and those facts were analyzed. Right. And then after that, there was quite a bit of reporting done by excellent reporters at Seven Days in Vermont Digger. Those are firmly based on facts and figures and analysis. There was a later uh, uh, bit of evidence that came to me after the school closed where a state legislator told me that a bank executive told him that the Sanders office interfered with the loan and as a result of that interference, the bank wrote the, the loan conditions so stringently that the, the college failed. Huh. Okay, so that is not even related to what I understood the court claim to be, that Jane Sanders borrowed more than the college could hope to ever repay, and in fact was not able to repay it and went under as a result, and that constitutes fraud. Is that true, do you believe? Well, all right, so Jane Sanders bought a huge piece of property from the Catholic Diocese. In order to buy that property, right. she had to borrow $10 million, six and a half from the bank, right about three and a half from the Catholic Diocese. Now in order to get those loans, she had to confirm guaranteed donations of 2.6 million dollars. Of that 2.6, the school was only able to collect about 25 percent. So does that constitute fraud, do you believe? Well, about, well, it certainly is uh, something that needs to be looked at, and of the confirmed donations, Three of the donors have come forward to say that the school overstated their pledge amounts. Ooh. So here's what I don't understand. I don't think anyone can test that Jane Sanders' tenure as the head of Burlington College was a disaster in the end for the school, which, as we said, no longer exists. She walked away with quite a bit of money. How did that happen? When Jane Sanders was asked to leave by the board, she lawyered up back then and was able to extract a $200,000 golden parachute before she left. How can, you, how can you tank a college and then walk away richer? That's a great question, Tucker. And if you look at, at who was harmed by this, this whole financial debacle, you yes. can see the Catholic, the Catholic Church lost almost $2 million. The taxpayers of Vermont lost almost $150,000. Uh, the, the bank lost untold amounts of money, and the school went bankrupt. And so the students were harmed, and vendors were harmed as well. But the Sanders, they were not financially harmed. I don't think there's any contesting that. FBI investigation, or not, I think what you said is factually supportable and shocking. And I'm glad that you're here to recount it for us. Brady, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.